for someone that someone has to have to be officially uh, intellectually challenged has been steadily going up for the last 60 years. In other words, we need more cognitive abilities, more self-regulatory abilities, more compassion and more depth of consciousness to deal with the increasingly complex and fast world. Now here's the beauty of that. In the cultures, the families, the, there are the cultures that create that and support that. When, when you have a family culture that's, say, pluralistic to yellow, to, to uh, pluralistic to integral, that culture um, uh, has a center of gravity that magnetizes the children up to that level. And by the time they leave that house at 18 or 19, they're going to have that level. Now, this has consequences. I mean, you, you met my son, Ethan. He's surrounding us. But Ethan is, and, and he'll admit this, he's an enormously healthier person at 18, 19, 21, 22, 23 than I was at 18, 19, 21, and 23. But he said it isolated him. And he's right. It did. It isolated him. At every level of development, he got, um, uh, had conflict he had, because he couldn't, there were aspects of those cultures that he couldn't sign in, in for, and that violated other people's sense of comfort, lower, lower left quadrant, sense of we space comfort. And Ethan was only comfortable with people that were a lot older than he was. Even though he's a great guy. Um, and it, so it was difficult for him. It was difficult for my daughter Zoe, too, for, for similar reasons. So that, now, the, the advantage is as they get to be, she's 20, 21, 22, the, she's 20, he's 23, they're turning into these really delightful, self-regulating adults that I'm just so impressed with. Um, you know, my, and my daughter had the same genetic legacy that I had. I mean, I had depression, I had OCD, I had all kinds of stuff. She had to struggle with that stuff too, but she did. And increasingly, in, in and, and so my belief, and they're very, very conservative about the people that they hang out with, which I really like. You know, find somebody, these, these, I, a lot of you know about my five-star thing. I, I encourage people who are, who are, who are single to, to ask themselves five questions about other, other people that they might, uh, you know, uh, other sex, the other sex. In other words, if I'm a feminine person, these are the five questions that I'd like you to always be looking for about guys. And if, if you're a guy, these are the five questions always ask about women. Is there erotic polarity between you? And, and not, not just people that you want to go out with, just everybody, just to develop these as sense organs. Is there erotic polarity between me and this other person? Are they self-regulating around their emotional and physical health? If I was in a relationship with them and there was conflict, would they be willing and able to get back to love, do what it took to get back to love? Would they be a superior parent, not just an okay parent, superior parent, and if they're a guy, do they have deep soul's purpose? And if they're a woman, if they're a feminine person, do they have a sense of appreciation and admiration for my deep soul's purpose? Just ask those questions, because if one of those things is missing, you're going to have predictable problems. If all five things are there, that person might want to grow with you for the rest of your life toward unity. And I thought a lot about these five things. I went back and forth and back and forth. And one guy I worked with several years ago, I told him, and he said, those aren't the ones you told me. He was really pissed. I mean, he got, he, got all, he got all conformist on me. He said, those aren't the right ones. I said, they're not. And he said, no, you told me these other ones. So he told me the other ones, and they were, the other ones were the same thing, but more complicated, and not, not in the same order. Because I, I really refined them. What are the five minimum things you look for? And those are the ones. 